Welcome to the Big D Breakdown. I'm your host, Larry Elise. On today's episode, we finish out the NFL season with our season finale. We keep recapping the latest headlines from around the AT&T Stadium, as well as a breakdown of the NFL playoffs. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Game Time, for sponsoring this episode. If you're looking for the best place to find tickets to your next Cowboys game, or Texas Rangers game, or another entertainment show, you're going to want to check out Game Time today. Use the link in the description and help support the show. Without further ado, let's dive right into today's first topic. The Cowboys failed to yet again reach the championship game. The Cowboys just allowed 19 points to the 49ers and lost. If we were all told the 49ers were slotted for that figure pre-game, confidence would be pretty high. However, the Cowboys offense just played one of their worst games of the season. It's truly a brutal way to end the season, especially for how the game felt through the first three quarters. They had opportunities, they had the lead, and they squandered them. To start, Dak Prescott. Oh, Prescott in what was equivalent to the biggest game of his career. He had his worst playoff performance to date. He had 23 completions for only 206 yards and two turnovers which were both downright inexcusable. And it wasn't just the interceptions. He missed open receivers and made poor reads. He was unable to make the throws he made last week. That performance against the Buccaneers seemed like an outlier. The two-play sequence to end the first half with Tony Pollard getting injured and Prescott throwing an interception was exactly what you can't do against high-quality teams. Good teams capitalize. The Cowboys didn't. Once Pollard was injured, there was no room running the ball. With Elliott averaging 2.6 yards per carry on 10 rushes, the pass protection and seeding Lamb were the two lonesome stars on the offense. Lamb caught 10 balls for 117 yards and a heroic effort. He had exactly 10 more catches than Michael Gallup, who battled through a lost season to some extent. The offense is to blame, though, and much of that goes back to Prescott. Mike McCarthy made some questionable calls in the second half, but the ship of blaming the head coach has sailed. This was on poor offensive execution, plain and simple. Seven penalties also didn't help, but again, this offense is to blame. The Cowboys defense did everything they could to hold the team in the game. They held McCaffrey to 3.5 yards per carry and sacked Brock Purdy twice. Speaking of Purdy, he completed 19 passes on 29 tries. Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk caught a combined six balls. Truly was a masterclass performance from the Cowboys defense. Overall, the organizational standard that this team was once held to needs to be lowered because they have not been able to get over the hump or even close to it in 28 years. It's upsetting, it's aggravating, and it's gut-wrenching. The worst part? Did you expect anything different? This is who they are. This is the Dallas Cowboys. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. What are your thoughts on the Cowboys season overall? And now on to our next topic. Skip Bayless usually has a lot to say. Some might say too much, but he was a man of few words after the Dallas Cowboys crashed and burned out of the playoffs. Like most Cowboys fans, Skip was preparing for what would have been an iconic NFC championship game between Dallas and Philadelphia. Objectively, those two teams meeting with a trip to the Super Bowl online would have ruled it, ruled, but it wasn't meant to be. The Cowboys watched their season end on Sunday night in Santa Clara with the 49ers taking their place in the title game instead. The loss was classic Cowboys, complete with the sort of stumbles that make them easy for outsiders to hate and impossible for fans to reckon with. Brett Maher missed a kick, Tony Pollard had to be carted off the field, and the last play of the game featured one of the worst designed lateral plays you'll ever see. Embarrassing seems like the right way to describe it, and it's feeling in its feeling being shared by Cowboys fans all over. The way the season ended for Dallas is so bad that it seemed to have a rip a hole in the space-time continuum and created a reality where Skip Bayless is actually a little empathetic. Or emphatic, excuse me. It wasn't quite the end of Terminator 2 because Skip's takes are hotter than the magma that melted Arnold, but it's about as 
close as we'll ever get. After the loss, Skip took to Twitter, because of course he did, but had a little more to say than he was generally upset that the Cowboys lost. Let's not gloss over the fact that this loss was such a heartbreaker that it forced Skip to admit he indeed has a soul. He's a man who has said more words than anyone should say in a lifetime, yet he was reduced to the most human he's ever been. It's a glimpse inside not only Skip, but Cowboys fans all over who just watch the team they care about more than anything lose for a 12th consecutive time without reaching the NFC Championship game. Dallas hadn't won a road playoff game since 1992 before beating, beating the Buccaneers last weekend and are 5-12 in the playoffs since their last Super Bowl win in 1995. The Cowboys brand is so strong that the star shields the pain of fans from the world. This team won three Super Bowls in the 90s, but it's almost been 30 years since that happened, and it's time to admit there's a fair amount of suffering going on, and it's lasted a long time. Long suffering and Cowboys fans aren't two things easily associated with one another, and a Skip Bayless tweet is the absolute last thing that will change minds. But the 1912 loss to San Francisco on Sunday cuts deep and reopens a lot of wounds that fans in Dallas are sick and tired of having to deal with year in and year out. Let us know your thoughts on the topics we covered in the comment section below. And now on to our next topic. It's time to end the Brett Maher experiment. The Dallas Cowboys put together a commanding drive in the second quarter after the 49ers jumped out to a 3-0 lead after a Prescott interception. The drive ended with a Dalton Schultz touchdown, his third of the playoffs. But Cowboy fans everywhere held their breath as Brett Maher trotted onto the field from the point after. The Cowboys made the bold decision to stick with Maher after he missed four extra points, a new NFL record in the wildcard win against the Buccaneers. And it took one quarter to backfire, as his attempt was blocked. There's nothing he can do about that. The special teams unit was overwhelmed by 49ers rushing and dropped the ball. However, replay shows that his kick, if it made it beyond the line of scrimmage, was going to miss by at least 10 feet to the left of the upright, according to Greg Olson. It's impossible to say, but the tra trajectory of the ball was pretty clear. That kick had no chance of going through the uprights. And we've officially reached the point where the experiment must end. NFL Twitter wasted no time trolling Mar and the Cowboys. Getting back to the matter at hand, we absolutely loathe the idea of calling for someone's job. But he seemingly still has the yips. Perhaps he was spooked by the impending 49ers defenders, but that's going above and beyond looking for excuses. An extra point should be nothing more than muscle memory for a professional kicker, and Mars' kick, as Olsen put it, was going to miss by less, at least 10 feet, if not more. Tristan Vizcaino not being on the active roster puts the Cowboys at a crossroads. Trust that he will redeem himself or go for two after touchdowns and every fourth down inside 49ers territory. After this latest miss, Dallas fans would likely side with the latter. So much for Jerry Jones' pregame prep talk after the 49ers played mind games with Marr by interrupting his pregame routine. Cowboys kicker is lost mentally in a historic slump, and there's no sense in hoping he breaks out of it with the season on the line. And now on to our next topic. Before we move on, let us know what do you think the Cowboys should do in regards to their kicker position. Should they keep him? Get rid of him? Uh, trade for a new one? Or sign a free agent? Let us know. But on to our next topic. Just like that, the Cowboys season is over. 12 wins in the regular season and one playoff win to show for it after their 19-12 loss to the 49ers on Sunday night. The defeat marked the Cowboys' 12th straight postseason appearance that they failed to reach conference championship weekend. It also extends their own record for the longest streak in NFL history, and they've now gone 27 seasons in total without reaching the NFC title game. The jokes keep coming in droves on Twitter, and there's nothing we can do about them. 
They're justified after another Cowboys playoff shortcoming. You can point to about 10 plays that led to the Cowboys falling short against the 49ers. Tony Pollard's ankle injury was devastating for the offense, but these four in particular stick out like a sore thumb. Number four, Dak Prescott misses his wide open T.Y. Hilton. This isn't a huge deal in the grand scheme of things, but man, could it have altered the trajectory of the game had it gone differently. On a key third down in the second half, Prescott had tunnel vision for C.D. Lamb, who turned in a great game to remember and hauled in an impossible catch while being held minutes earlier and targeted number 88, despite the fact that he was blanketed by Fred Warner. Prescott nearly threaded the needle, but Lamb didn't have nearly enough wiggle room to make the play. Perhaps it was the 49ers' pressure that sped up Prescott's internal clock because he had T.Y. Hilton uncovered up to seam for a potential touchdown. At the very least, Hilton makes the grab and the Cowboys have first and goal. Prescott was under siege on the plane and didn't, didn't have time to turn back to Hilton. However, it's pretty clear that the quarterback had tunnel vision for his go-to receiver. Had Dak seen the entire field after taking the snap, he hits Hilton in stride for a touchdown. Number three, Donovan Wilson holding penalty on George Kittle. The 49ers 10 play 91 yard touchdown drive was the story of the game. Much like last season's playoffs lost to San Francisco, Dallas's second half penalties came home to roost. On this drive alone, they committed three infractions. None was bigger than Wilson's hold on George Kittle on third and eight. The pass rush got home in the form of Demarcus Lawrence. Brock Purdy didn't have enough time to locate Kittle up the seam. Beaten on the route, Wilson bear-hugged the Niner, Niners tight end, and the drive continued. Ipso facto, a colossal defensive stand quickly morphed into a back-breaking rushing score from Christian McCaffrey. The touchdown extended the 49ers' lead to 16-9, and that was more than enough to get the job done with Dallas' is struggling to muster anything resembling, resembling a rhythm on offense. Wilson was a rock all year for Dan Quinn, but he had a lapse in judgment, and it cost the Cowboys dearly with their season on the line. Next up, at number two, Dak Prescott's interception before halftime. There's nothing we can say to defend Dak after that performance. Folks will question whether he's the right guy for the job, but most of the discourse will center on his inability to win the big game and understandably slow. Or so, excuse me. Was Prescott flawless against the Buccaneers? Without a doubt, it was the best performance of his career, given what was on the line in terms of his career narrative. But he did nothing to accelerate it Sunday night, and beating an 8-9 and team on wildcard weekend isn't exactly that big of an achievement for what it's worth. In a vacuum, Prescott's interception before halftime was as deflating as it was indefensible. The Cowboys were on the verge of scoring before the break, and Prescott needlessly tried fighting a pass into a tight window and got picked off. A quarterback with Prescott's experience has to know better. A turnover is the worst case scenario in that situation. A tie game in the late first half when your team receives the second half kickoff in a perfect world, Dak leads the offense to a touchdown or a field goal and Dallas enters the break in front. Thanks to the pick, the Cowboys squandered all of their momentum and San Francisco took a 9-6 lead with a Robbie Gould field goal. And next, and finally, number one, the awful Trayvon Diggs sequence. We have nothing negative to say about Diggs' coverage. He was hardly heard from Sunday night, just days after locking down Mike Evans. That said, he blew two opportunities to turn the game in the Cowboys' favor on the same drive in the third quarter. The first came on George Kittle's bobbled catch, Kittle juggled Brock Purdy's slightly errant pass multiple times before coming down with it. As he bobbled it, Diggs, uh, Diggs mistimed his tackle and flew right past Kittle, who knew nothing about the oncoming Cowboys defender. If Diggs even makes contact with Kittle, not even a clean hit, odds are the 49ers' top, uh, tight end drops the ball. Thanks to another lame duck tackling effort from Diggs, Kittle completed the catch, and the 49ers pick up a huge 30 yards in the process. Later in the drive, Diggs flat out dropped an interception. It was a tailor-made pick. Anthony Barr tipped the ball at the line of scrimmage, 
but you expect a corner with Diggs' ball skills to make the play 10 times out of 10. 49ers scored a touchdown to extend their lead to 16-9 a few plays later. At the end of the day, Diggs had two chances to make a game-changing play for his team, and he came up small in both circumstances. None was bigger than the drop interception, though. Both plays were, were bad looks for the cornerback, who ultimately had a playoffs to forget. And we're going to mention an honorable mention, which would be Devontae Turpin's long return that should have went for a touchdown. Turpin welcomed contact around midfield instead of belting outside when he could have went untouched into the end zone. Let us know your thoughts on any of the plays we missed that really hurt the Cowboys. And if you want to support the channel, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash the big D. As always, find us on Good Pods, subscribe to the podcast on all major podcast platforms, and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button to be notified of future videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching and listening. We'll see you next time.